filtered in slowly but surely. We saw this kind of building and didn't really expect this level of success out of them. And for them to qualify right to the legend stage going 3-0 would be absolutely massive. A capstone on a beautiful year for Maus as they've retooled the entire organization around this roster. Man, that would be something special. I'm hyped up. Inferno. No, it would be. And not only that, it, it, I think the team that best showcases the academy potential in doing that as well, because not a lot of them have graduated that many players, a core of the players to the main team and made it work. The other one would be the uh, the Gambit Academy that became Gambit, that now became Cloud9, but you know, I think it's sure. different different fashion. That was a roster kind of progressing to this point. That was This was like players slowly being exchanged out of the main roster over the course of months. That's true. Well, Paul's pop, it looks like, is the call for Mouse. Dexter... It all mid with smoke flash, frozen at the base of middle in the pit, in the small pit, with just a smoke, exertion, and JDC and Torji coming towards the end of halls, and Roy and Crims. No one's actually watching this. This is a perfect call. What's the reaction going to be from Crims and Roy? That's all important. Dexter waiting for this flash over, takes some damage from the Molotov as that flash is thrown. That means they know he's isolated now in middle because he was supporting the players that got by them, waterfalling out of the apartments. And they'll concede that they lost the pit, but take the fight they know they can win in exchange for that bomb goes down early. Yeah, but, but it's planted on the other side of the missile boxes, right? It's planted on the other side of the center box, so just keep that in mind as this retake comes in. Exertion. They're looking toward library. Faster's just trying to keep them basically distracted, keep the aggro onto him, but frozen on the flank, catch them out all together. Crim spotted it, Crim saw it, and now it becomes an issued one-on-ones inside the pit. Oh my goodness, Torzi, oh, he just goes in, no. he got both, he got both on the knife. He timed it so well, forget the reload, his teammates did it all, but they are on the defuse. Fast is still trying to pull him back out, and Torzi can't win that one. No knife, no blade, no bullet. It's frozen that has to go one-on-one, -on -one. and Fasha is gonna try to bring a third into this round, but not gonna happen. Frozen holds it together. My God, Torzi. What just happened? I saw the first player, low HP. Second player, uh, he might have gotten goose right at the perfect moment, but what, a double knife from Torji and the pistol? He's got Money, 60, money, baby. He's got $6,400 all of a sudden. Show me the knives. I want to, yeah, that's sick. Look at this. He reads it so well. He's like, all right, oh, they're looking back. Crims. Frozen Frozen <laughs> calls it too, and then they walked into each other. And Crims had back turned as well. He was dealing with the fight towards middle, towards brackets. That is so awesome. Shout out to Torji. That might be the first double knife I've definitely had a major, but that I've ever commentated in a round in that fashion. Frozen Torzi doubling up again. He's got Nika Daz and Faster this time. So much money in a single round. Yeah, he's he's rich. He's rich real quick. And then they handle the follow-up uh, just perfectly. A push down middle. It's shut down completely. Crims has to back off to the next stage into the site. Finishes off attack from earlier. That's Dexter to fall. No rebuttal just yet, and now Roy has arrived on rap side, wow. but... Oh, there's Crims, deleted. And Roy's the last one remaining. They know exactly where he is. Good shooting from Exertion. All right, well, that's one way to start a game. Yeah, no, I'm loving it. Mouse is loving it. This is exactly what they want. They've won, by the way, Jason, in case you wanted to know, all three pistols so far. All three pistols. That's... Or all three knife rounds, according to Torzi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever, it, whatever it may be. That's lovely. I really like the gameplay we're seeing out of Exertion as well. He, he's been looking great within this roster. And I, I mean, we even saw the quote, I think, earlier today. And I, maybe the pre-show, maybe the pre-match here on this one where Exertion has just been basically saying, you know, Dexter's done a great job as the in-game leader to just make sure that I know I have complete freedom. He's basically saying, I am unleashed. I have the opportunity to make my own decisions. And, and boy, they're getting rewarded by his stellar play. Triple kill in the round for Exertion. Nope, that was just one kill. I'm crazy. I thought I counted three, but maybe I just can't count. Gun's going to be coming out for Fnatic now. M4 is across the board. AWP picked up finally by Nikodaz right at the end of freeze time. And there is a MAC-10 in play for Dexter. Only one player with head armor as well, so the MAC-10 can do absolutely brutal work. You gotta love that Torzi's the one that gets that and he's the opper too. Like it just, it all, it, it's perfect. He's bought an op in round four and he's still got 1500 bucks. Yep. JDC's got 4K, Dexter's 5800, they're rich. Well, and Zershin has, yeah, 44. Yeah, they've got another op. Three ops, no matter what, in the next round. <laughs> four ops. They could buy four ops in the next round if they really wanted to. That's, that's one way to put it, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you're not gonna do that, but the contingency plan is there. The fact that he has 1500, he could still get armor and someone's gonna drop him an off no matter what happens. Or will you? 
Oh, I will. Or he'll knife me. Patient opening again for Mouse. Much like Vertigo, staying pretty chill, not trying to take anything with too much pace quite yet. Frozen is chucking out utility and throwing a distraction in Banana. All the meanwhile, Dexter and the rest of his teammates aligning in middle to take brackets control. Nikodah's going to be smoked off. That nade should do some decent damage, and yep. indeed it will. Chunks him down. You're good at those nade calls, Jason. I make sure. Yeah, well, I should learn from that. Dexter going to try and swing over toward the short side. Crims is the one that's inside of the pit. Smoke already deployed, so should a Molotov go that direction, it's not going to go. Oh, it does spread. It is sitting behind the smoke. It could be a problem for them. They are still getting the kills, though. How has this worked out? USP as well for Crims to take out Zershin. It's all on Frozen and Torzi. AWP trying to go through the wall. It will. Torzi's having a heck of a game. Frozen knows there's one back toward the trash side. He had his crosshair placed onto it, but now he needs to support his teammate. Mezzi goes down, and suddenly the Sight and the Palm are in possession of Maus. To the Vespa. Fastshare could try to elevate himself above the smoke and catch an off angle on Torzi. It's exactly what he'll do. And Frozen's gone back through the apartments, Oof. which means he's going to come out short side. But it's a tough angle to hold. Bob's not planted for him either. Exactly. Fastshare's going to already be clearing ultimate angles here. Okay, he knows they're both inside. He knows they're both close. Low on Nikodas, but he sneaks out AWP. No mistake on it. 3-1. That might have been a little bit of a mistake from Frozen, not realizing where the bomb was planted. He could have done way more work if he was actually parked up in Palace and actually supporting Torji inside the bomb site to find him a new position. That was tough to deal with with that smoke still up, allowing access, as you mentioned, over to the Vespa and Graveyard as well. And a nice retake, a nice recovery from Fnatic from what was a four on two at one point into a two on two. Good on them for recovering, but this is great initial defense from Crims. First actually, kill, okay. even gets one with the USP, and yeah, there it is. Torji has nowhere to go after that. I, I thought he, we jumped away from it. I thought he actually probably went up above the smoke, but it actually just... Just cleared. Yeah, it was perfect timing for and him. the ops just a little unwieldy to deal with that kind of a scenario. I don't think he felt safe from lane either, which is why Frozen kind of going through from halls all the way back towards Boiler was just like, you're so far away from action and information for so long that Torji's on an island. But as you mentioned, plenty of money on the mouse side, so Torji's going to have an AWP yet again. Cool. Double up the nade. But to no success, because they bounce it to off, uh, excuse me, off to the cubby side, and he's at the tree, so frozen safe from that. Flash from Mezzi at Coffins. Fasha can peek off the back of this and see exactly what's going on up in And this would be a good time, Flash. They're all lined up. This would actually blind them. This is a guaranteed at least one kill, but they aren't going to throw it just yet. And it might be too late because they're getting closer. Nikodas needs to be nailing any potential oh, shots. Now, not going to happen. <laughs> they walked straight out. I don't even know if he saw his shoulder because I would have thought Nikodas had an angle under that, but dead either way. Can't press anything, though. You don't want to give away a two-man advantage by trying to come through the smoke. You're not really sure if Mezzi's going to be right behind it. They're going to do it anyways. Big risk. Mezzi's got the first and the second, and that's why it's so difficult. Punished by the risk. Triple kill for Mezzi, and he's still alive, and he's still chilling. Now Crims has arrived. Now the utility from Maus has faded away, and they've given up a huge advantage. And the fact that Mezzi never threw that flash to support the two in Banana meant that they never had any idea there was a third player. If that flash comes over, then they know. So it almost works out in their favor. JDC trying to make this work still. One on three. Has cross, but Mezzi's going to pop out. Fourth kill for him in the round. And it's 3-2 as Fnatic take control of the game. Yeah, man, Mouse is going to be disappointed by that one. They had plenty of time to wait out that smoke if they wanted. Plenty of time to, to maintain some kind of presence elsewhere on the map. And that is a huge loss after such a big opening. The boost up on top of the wall for the first kill and the double peak as well. And then it all slips away. One round lead for Maus, and all that money, that double knife, all the cash that it brought into the team is, has dissipated. It's back down to Deagles, and only one player with armor. Ooh, fast takes a tick of damage from that Molotov. That could have given away his position, fortunately for him. No one wants to peek behind it. The pistols instead, an exertion with two HP. I'm going to be taking claim or attempting to take claim to A. Crim's good spot underneath of the hay bales. Finds the first, spots the second. No armor. Should be good for more, but not. This JDC comes out from the wall. He's canceled out by Roy, who closes out the round, and we are tied. Twa-twa. 
Trois, toi. Menage et toi. Reste toi avant. Some might say. Timeout called by Mouse. They have to talk things over because this has been a devastating three rounds to lose. A very close, narrow clutch that they put themselves in a good position in. A huge five on three advantage they let slip away. Those are the mistakes and miscues that you want to get rid of as early as possible, especially in a qualifying game. So back to weapons this time for Mouse. Krim's holding his own. Famously was a B player in the early iterations of Fnatic. Yeah. He was, you know, it was, the, it was the debate if it was Freiburg or Krim's that was the king of banana. Although I, I would have said Kr uh, Freiburg was more the king of banana itself because he would actually challenge it, whereas Krim's often played passively inside of the site. Yeah, but I mean, he was one of the early, him and uh, Olaf, one of the early duos of that bomb set, right? That really made a name for, for dominance in that part of the map. Still, I think Pitt's a solid position for someone of his skill set. Nice opening kill provided by JDC. That is the aforementioned Crims to go down with an aggressive push. Roy and Nikodaz with a crossfire on both sides of mid. Flash out, Nikodaz is back inside of trash. Molotov's gonna be thrown out. Oh, he's gonna land straight on top of him. They know where he is. They swing. It's Roy that gets the kill. They knew they had him pushed back on the opposite side. They knew that there was just gonna be Roy that was isolated. So they get the kill. Nikodaz caught out this time. Flashed off and quick switch. Left himself with nowhere to go. Caught in the middle of nowhere. And Frozen doesn't want anything to do with the bomb. He's gonna throw that to his teammates and go back and watch for the rotations. This should be a plan. Everyone's a hot potato, Jason. Yeah, yeah. That's not the potato, that's not the potato you want to do it with. That's quite literally what the game is kind of yeah, yeah, all suggesting, about. you know? That's, yeah, that's true. All the timing. Frozen, go bake a pie. He's going to do it. Oh. That's a messy pie. <laughs> well done. That's pretty good. Pull that one out of the hat. Yeah, I can't cook either. It's okay, though, Jason. Well, that's going to be it. And technically, that's not cooking. That's baking. All the five weapons are going to be safe from here on out. But Mao's having another good round on the board. Four. They get up to the lead again. They break it wide open, provided from the entry from JDC. He's got a double kill in the round. Ezzy and Foster, no chance to get back into it. Bomb goes off. Over on the mainstream as well, during this matchup also, if you want to tune into that game, it is Double uh, O Nation playing on the stage against IHC in an elimination game. We have a qualification game here on the B stream, elimination game on the mainstream, elimination game of a Brazilian team on the mainstream. Yes, we do. Yeah, that's going to be pretty, pretty wild. Double O Nation up against IHC, and that one looking pretty tense so far. Yeah, it's actually surprisingly close in my in my brain. That's my O and three pick. I'm potentially ruined. I know a lot of people out there's ruined last night. This is why I don't do pickums, Jason. Yeah, you can't lose if you don't play. Can't lose if I don't play. Yeah, you can't win either. I'm already a winner in my own mind, <laughs> so I don't need your validation. Fair play. Round eight coming in hot. Off in the hands of Nikodaz. Off in the hands of Torji. Still, money is starting to run low for Fnatic. Funds are are at a minimum. Yeah, absolutely they are. And this is the case. I mean, that was what, what happened to Mouse early on as well when they gave up that early lead, the 3 nothing lead. So now they have a chance to break in again and take control of this half as it would be. That would potentially put them up to a six-round score already. Remember, this being Mouse's map choice. Thus, the CT side decision to start for Fnatic. Bounce Nade does some damage onto both Frozen and Dexter. They're going to go through the smokes at the bottom of Banana, though. They want it. They know that that was thrown from far because they heard it bounce off the wall. So that means they've got some position they can take and ascertain inside of the lower side of the tree. Roy's in a decent little spot here. Elevated up on top of the ledge, the windowsill. What can he get from it, though? No real challenge for Mouse and Banana, either. Exertion's going to find the opening. This time it was JDC in the previous round. This is a clean frag from Exertion. Fashion went down here last time. Nikodas couldn't cover him. 
He played at the top of the bags this time, moves in, he's got his gun ready. He was playing anti-flash last time. Taking the battle was better off towards, he's fired! He swings forward, he actually gets away with it considering there was too many people there that could have easily denied that. That gives the man advantage to Fnatic. Smoke still down towards CT. And JDC will sit back to try and secure that position, but Messi's gonna go right through this. And he knows that they're not planning it, that they can't be yet because they've looked toward it for some spam. JDC in the trade again, but it's a one on two and they are pinching. Oh, if he had a read right now, Okay, he doesn't because Palm's not in his hand. I was going to say he could try to run this back towards CT on that single kill, but he doesn't know where the second player is. And Crims can take his time in this situation. JDC going to do the smartest thing possible, use the smoke and the statue to give himself protection from Banana. He didn't protect his teammate planting the bomb because he was worried about the Banana flank, so I think he's got to have an inkling at some point. Well, it doesn't matter now. You play this corner, you cover all the dots. They've got to cross no matter what. Question is, when does the timing of the peak come in for Crimson? He's going to see the gun barrel. Crimson has the advantage, and he's made no mistake on it. It's going to be 4 4. I'm amazed he didn't really fully consider that. I'm amazed he didn't really fully like kind of look over in that position when there was so much silence elsewhere. We didn't see Crimson CT spawn, didn't see him challenging Torrent's coffin whatsoever. So, really slow play from Crimson. Gotta say, though, gotta be frustrating for Crimson at 2v1 at one point. Nikodos with that aggressive peak. Crimson's gotta be like, man, I really wish I had a teammate in this scenario. Tense situation, and Fnatic survive it. But it's costly. Four players go down and a plant for Maus means they can reinvest moving forward. So Fnatic's still on the back foot in terms of their money. That's the one right there. JDC had been at, at the boards looking down Banana for the flank of Crims. Just missed the timing on it. Nikodaz shot across the top of Alt mid. No success. Another chance to try and win this economic battle right now for either team. But the advantage certainly with the CTs, although you could argue the MAC-10 is every bit as good as a silly FAMAS. Dash it down, Frozen, headshot on that. He's gonna speak out on the back of it as well. Good flash from Torzi. And the aggressive play catches Mezzi out that next to the two-man advantage, making it a third Roy caught by JDC. Oh, this is a disgusting round for Mouse. Those two kills in Banana force a little bit of movement. JDC takes a perfect opportunity. But nicely done from Frozen. I mean, Foster doesn't check. He doesn't even he doesn't even consider logs to be a danger. He might have thought he got got the angle early enough that no one could have been there. And that leaves Mezzi alone and in the open with nowhere to go. Perfect for a flashbang. I don't know what uh, Crims is doing rotating over. Maybe just trying to spam through to get a kill, but you're not going for this. There's no universe. This is Crims. Okay. He just likes to donate guns to charity. He's such a noble gentleman. Yeah, but it would have been great to have that in the next round to fight with. You got nothing else really to speak of. Just this AWP. I mean, it's quite a weapon to fight with, but yeah, absolutely. You've just given up another round again to Mouse. Back and forth, though, this half so far. Well, I think, I think too, I mean, you know, there's no losing bonus. There's no loss bonus built up for Fnatic. So, I mean, they're going to have to, you know, potentially save twice. So they're probably going to be buying and they could force buy in this round. And if you have an M4, that makes that kind of a force oh, buy way, better. way more doable. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, I, I get maybe the philosophy of what his thoughts were. It's been back and forth. I just mentioned it, this was the key to the economy in that round for either team. He thinks, hey, if I can at least get one more kill in this situation, yeah. maybe I can make it more costly. But again, that, that's a double-edged sword and just, he fell on top of it. Yeah, I just so. don't even think it's worth the risk. So maybe a little bit of criticism you could levy at Crims there. And we'll see what Fnatic decide to do with the situation. You've got three players at 1,500, Roy at 2,000. It's not pretty. You don't like it. It ain't pretty. It just looks that way. That's a boomer song too, Jason. Okay. I don't know that one. <laughs> you would if you heard it. 5-4. Here is that investment from Fnatic. MP9 picked up by Roy. P250 on Fosher. Deagles on Mezzi and Krims without armor. And JDC knows it's a low economy round. He's gone down to the MAC-10. Oof. Nikodaz wants more on this. He's going to try and peek this wide. Oh, the flash timing. I thought he clicked it. I thought he actually got the preemptive strike on that, but it must have gone just high and right of the head and over the shoulder. He's taking some damage as he falls off too. Another Hall's play, but they're going right at the stack. This is exactly what Fnatic would want. 
That's gonna be tough. SMG versus SMG. JDT's given. Oh my goodness, his position away already. How did Broy not hit that? Deagle instead, though, for Crims will do the damage. He falls off, and that gives Mezzi a chance. They're not gonna overcommit. Torzi's in the lane. And no one to wrap around behind it just yet. And he sees the kneecap pop out. He'll let the adventurer get away with his career still intact. Mouse can be. Patient, though. They can wait out these smokes. 50 seconds on the clock. Don't force it. I like the pause call. I like that they didn't jump out of halls after that because they didn't have the fights they wanted. Crims is going to add a headshot on top, and now it gets a little bit dangerous. That's the bomb dropped in lane. Assertion. Oh! That's just a lovely shot straight up top from Crims. Gets the headshot into him. It's all unfrozen. This started out with very little for Fnatic. We just said that was the last round. The economic situation. You mentioned not having the M4 to force by around. Doesn't even matter. Fnatic's going to win that one as it all comes down to the A side at stack. Yeah, why the hell not? Why the hell not? I think that Mao's even played a lot of that correctly. Some good shots from, from Crims, but I mean, they didn't get the they didn't get the exact Hulls pop and Hulls play that they wanted. They couldn't find that second kill. But man, they just had nowhere to go afterwards. They just kind of sat behind the smokes and waited, and Crims took all the advantages. Well done from Crims. Solid. The smile on the man. You can call him the Swedish Joker. The Jason. Swedish Joker. Shout out to Hugo. I was going to say, I recognize that name. Yeah. I've done an interview with him. Yeah, absolutely. Where's he been? At home. Okay. In Malmo. In Sweden. Yeah. Torzi sitting back inside of the arch. Teammate already pushed up, frozen. So they didn't quite break down Mal's based on that previous round. Well, Foster's at Sandbags. Nikodaz is going to be in support. Tries to turn the corner. Mouse has done a decent job with this fight. Previously, they do it again. Dexter with the opening kill, but Nikodaz is going to stick around with the alt. Looking for another fight. But Mouse is content with the one for one. And it's towards rap side we go next. What a hold from Mezzi. What a game he's putting together. 11 kills. And an all important and impactful double kill here. Crim's good shot again. He uses that hay bale's position once more. Frozen's going to head the other direction back down to see if anyone's pushing out from Banana. But a one on four and Fnatic gonna take a lead potentially for the first time in this game. Yeah, they are gonna get it. Oh, this is, what a turnaround. Miles had a, had a great chance of just escalating their own league, of just running away with this half a little bit in the previous, but that, that Deagle round, that one saved off and the Deagles picked up, did, did the job perfectly. As unlikely as it was, Crimson didn't even have armor in that round. 6-5 for Fnatic, and they're trying to recover in this series. They lost their own map pick of Vertigo previously to go down 0-1 in the series. Looking to steal Mouse's map pick of Inferno as well here. Yeah, steal it back the other way. One each. That would force us into Ancient the first time we would see that. On our stream, I would say the first time at the Major, but IHC and Double O Nation are currently playing on that map right now. Oh, nice. It's because they're classy. It didn't start on Vertigo. <laughs> the classy folks. Timeout called for Mouse again. It's their second timeout of the half. Get Cyclone in on the equation. They just don't have the money to really do anything out of this timeout. It's the one AK-47 on Frozen, and everything else should just be Glocks. Everyone's hovering right around 2K. They do have the loss bonus building up. They'll get 2,400 after this round ends. So Mao's looking for round 13 to be their next buy. Very patient this time, not even going beyond the T stairs. Exertion, the only one that even gave some thought to middle as he went through the underpass position to do so. Little half wall stack at the banana position for Fnatic, and it's Master that's just waiting it out with the M4. Ooh, 
Okay, jumping around the corner. Tasha can line him up. Oh, he's being, he was new, he was new, he was running out of ammo. He was being very conservative, very precise. Triple kill in the round for Fosher. Two round lead now for Fnatic at seven to five, but the AKs are gonna come right back out for Maus. Although frozen by virtue of saving his AK in the previous round, has only got 2,500. He'll drop down to a MAC-10. This is looking good now. CT side. Gonna put the pressure on the Maus when they swap over. Gonna have to win out the pistol potentially again just to get that momentum, not to let this get too far away if they can't get another round or two on the board. When you think of the opportunities Maus has let slip away, a 2v2 that they lost at the A bomb site, the Mezzi quad kill when they tried to enter into the B bomb site in a five on three. That was absolutely force brutal. By. Yeah, yeah, forced by loss as well. This half should, in theory, be just Maus dominating, but they have let every opportunity slip away from them. Now they've got to do it the hard way if they want to. And still not even done this half. We're going to get a bit ahead of ourselves in that situation. But they have lost this opening duel round. In, sorry, the opening duel in this round already. Frozen gone down. So Nikodaz holding off the angle at Arch. He can fire one and fall. I don't know. The, okay, he does know. I was going to say, I don't know if he knows that he's gone that far. Dexter at least gets the trade. But that's still to only keep them within one. And with a flash out, Roy sits inside of the library. And... Shuts that chapter. Nice. I think it's the first time anyone's used chapter in library. Why? I just, why, how, why, I never thought of that before. You don't really shut a chapter, though, do you? You, you shut the book. Yeah, but that would also shut the chapter. Shut the book on that chapter. Just saying. I think. Again, we might be stupid. Oh, no, no we're definitely <laughs> stupid. But we might be wrong in this case. Nice shot for Mezzi. As Torji comes up, and JDC's just going to back off. Man, Mal's really can't find Isn't anything. Isn't it close that chapter, shut the book? Potentially. We could spend a lot of time on this. Yeah, we could spend a lot of time yeah. being wrong. It's so wild. Ooh, nice shot from JDC to hold on to the AK. Another one, perhaps, but Mezzi shuts him down. 15 was, kills now on Mezzi. He was getting a little too confident with that, wasn't he? He's like, yeah. oh, I'll just peek mid again. Heat like, check, baby. Yeah, exactly. But uh, unfortunately for him, he's gone the AK as well. And it's now 7 to 5, as we say, for Fnatic, having a pretty comfortable lead. I say comfortable, I'm just peeking over. It's the economy I'm trying to find. Excuse me, and by the way, 8 to 5. And it's going to be just the pistols for Maus, so yeah, this should be pretty decent for them now. Knock, knock, Nico with the AWP top middle. This is where you really, you really look back at those, you know, miss We said don't get ahead of ourselves. That's where you go back to those three rounds that are just heartbreaking losses for Maus. Oh yeah. Don't have to be in this position. Instead, they're going to be the ones trying to recover Inferno, much like Fnatic tried to do on Vertigo, to no avail. Everyone from Mal's huddled at the base of middle. I'm going to start moving up Banana. They have got plenty of utility for the execute. Three smokes, one flashbang might be a little bit brutal, but Molotovs to clear out a couple positions. Flower pot boost with a cross set with Mezzi. The loss bonus at this point is now built up to four rounds, so it'll be maximized. But that does mean they need a plant to make it a full buy with utility in the next round, not just a buy with some weapons. They've got this into the site, the bomb that is. Fastest force back toward Ruin, so a chance they can get that bomb plant down. That has to be primary target, primary goal. Torzi's going to do it. The AK on Frozen is everything. That's going to have to win the round. JDC's on low HP, but Frozen can peek off of his contact. Oh, he's got the first kill. Needs a follow-up. It's Foster trying to hold on to that position. Frozen. Sticking around Coffins for the moment. Now gets aggressive, but can't handle it. Good trade by Torzi, but they need the AK more than they need the P250. And Frozen had the call is exactly his position. Good nade from Roy. Dumps that right over top of the new box. And it's 9-5. 9-5. What a great comeback from Fnatic. And actually, I don't know if it's even worth calling it a comeback, but oh boy, this is five rounds straight. This yep. is a 9-2 run. Max lost bonus and bomb down, though. So we'll see what they can come up with. You're right, 9-2 run. 
It took a while to win the economy war. They won it. But let's see if Maus can get a sixth. They almost, I almost feel like they need it based on how this game is going and if they want to have any chance. Uh, it's, it's, sure, you can still have a comeback CT side, right? It's their map choice. Maybe they're going to look great. Everything's going to be lovely. But you don't want to put yourself in that, that situation where the pressure is on if you make even one mistake, if you don't win the pistol, and then it's really an uphill battle. Yeah, let's see what they got here in this final round of the first half. Round 15, Exertion has kind of stepped up towards the bench in middle. Roy underneath balcony. Krims is going to play at the hay cart. Nikodal's in Foster to defend at top banana. They're over by Sandbags. Oh, good shot from Roy. No chance for a trade. Flashbang blinded the follow-up player, but Exertion comes back for it. Foster's going to push down Banana. Torji's got to be aware, and he's not. He's not at all. He goes down for free. Yeah, he does. Brutal. Karma for the way this one started for him. Frozen pops up. That's a welcome affair. It catches out fashion. Now they have Banana open, and they know it. And better than that, they have Mezzi locked in. Okay, they don't because the smoke's there. They could have had him locked in. The positioning from Exertion was very solid. But he is going to concede the fact that Mezzi is going to get by. Krims won't have the same fortune. Yeah, and Mezzi had to make a decision a little bit earlier if he wanted to try and stop B. But now uh, this is so tough. Exertion will be able to cut him off back seven. But the timing on Krims is everything. Krims is going to start running over. Exertion should hear these footsteps. Got the first one on Krims easy. And he thinks he's safe because his teammate's already gone by. Turns around, spots Mezzi. He's unfortunately for him in behind the wooden pillar on the... Well, but it better be a wishing well for Mezzi if he wants any chance at it. Not going to have it, TDC. He'll hold on to it. So we get a 9 6 score. We get the last round before half. Mouse Sports, a chance. They've gotten every pistol so far in this series. They're going to need another to make a case for a second half comeback. We're going to take a break.
9-6, map two, mounds up the first one by taking and stealing away Vertigo from Fnatic, but Fnatic have the lead, considering they were back and forth at the start of this one. They look pretty comfortable in the CT side of it. For yeah, they took control after capitalizing on a couple miscues, a couple missed opportunity from Mouse, and they really ran away with a, with a certain stretch in that half. A five-round run gave them a nice big lead. Mouse was at least able to kind of cut it and or stop it, put a stop to it, right? Here's the duelies, exertion. Let's see what he's got close up. First one's his. And oh boy, Fnatic got stopped cold by a flashbang. Good little goosh, but the duelies get another one and Dexter has arrived. He certainly has. So now you can count four for four for pistols and mouse sports. They're looking absolutely solid right now. Fnatic's perspective, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, that's always a conversation point, right? Like, if you lose a series 2 nothing, and it's like, oh, I lost all four pistols. Well, like, it'd be nice to have a few rounds out of those pistols. At least one of them would be great, some breathing room. But yeah, no no dice for Fnatic so far in these first two maps. So they're going to have to uh, close out Inferno the hard way, all in gun rounds. Ash set to try and take over some position at Catwalk. Roy watching up middle right now as Mezzi and Crims are positioned to support him. Nade, damage onto Nico Daz, puts him onto 67. Roy's on his own here, he's just going. He's caught, taken down. Torzy, JDC, and Dexter, all three of them top middle. Zershin even pushed down from behind, and he's loving it. Look at him, look at him, just joking. Been far and away playing like the better team on Vertigo, and even to a certain degree in the, in the first half with some of the positions they put themselves in. So I, I think on some level this recovery isn't going to be as hard. I don't think they're going to be as stressed as you might expect, Mouse, after the first half went the way it did. They might just have a real quick bounce back on the CT side, but at least here in this round, round number 18, they're going to be disadvantaged. Three from Austin and MP9 against five AK-47s. Goes up, Dexter. Oh, he's gonna be blind. Good return flash. Unfortunately, it's not early enough or strong enough. As the second one actually may have been thrown by Fast Shot. I thought it came out as a CT one from Torzi, but he didn't get assists on. They've just overrun the site. Yeah. They've just dominated this on the second half by. What a fast paced round from Fnatic. Mal's had no chance. They just get swept off the map. Wow. Dexter only got the one, but I thought that was decent, all things considered, but they just. Wolfston. Yeah, not the worst. I mean, look, it's not all over. They got plenty of money to drop weapons over and have another strong buy into the next round. So Fnatic have gotten uh, gotten over this one. But as we mentioned, a stronger buy for the T side with all the AKs against the FAMAS. Round 19 is going to be an all-important round for Maus because if they lose it, their economy is going to be shattered again very early in this CT side. And then you play the game of having to scramble to recover it, to string rounds together with low economy. And that's never a fun game on Inferno. As he's moving down mid, seeing if he can find anyone trying to save a weapon or trying to see if anyone's going to try and retreat down the T-Ramp, but he shouldn't be able to find any kills. And Fnatic extend the lead back up to two. 10-8. So now the... I mean, you said the hard way all on gun rounds. Now it's... A little bit easier, because they take back the economic advantage. Yeah, man. Mouse just did not expect that pace. No. Why they, would you? And oh, that's cruel. Yep, it is cruel. But uh, Fnatic were cruel to Mouse the entire round, so why should we be surprised by that? Yeah, don't spare the chickens. Here we go. Dexter going to jump across mid. There is a deep smoke down. And it's Paul's aggression. JDC pushing downstairs. Dexter playing in boiler. Actually, JDC called it off for some reason. I think they got something they don't like, but no one was actually watching for this. Either way, it's back to B. We turn our attention as fast. Oh, it's going to catch up frozen. He thought he was closer. He actually came out staring toward the barrels. Molotov on the corner. This will force a rotation back by Torji. Ash on 39. He took a bit of damage, in fact, from his teammates. Molotov crossing over, but he's got the cubby position. Zerson's going to have to be careful on this. Bomb's still back at T-Stairs. They can rotate off, and it's a good kill, but here's the trade. Oh, good snap from Zershan. I was going to say, there's the trade. Fasha was positioned for that the whole time. However, that the tough part is JDC's on his own. He's found himself a little bit of position of safety. He's up in halls. If he can tuck himself into the corner, that's going to be so hard to clear, but he's going to get aggressive. 
Pushing down with the MP9. He can wrap around. He hears these footsteps. And now that he hears them coming up lane, he realizes he's lost the timing to flank Boiler. He wants to pounce when they try and plant the bomb. Oh, no. Oh, damage talk about fine. missed opportunity, though. Crims went back around. I was going to say damage is fine because his teammates are able to capitalize. You're right. He didn't get a clean kill, and they'll collect Roy with 2 and 11 for Fnatic. That's been the name of Inferno so far for Maus is missed opportunities, and that one's going to hurt. Not able to get that kill. Because even if you get that kill and go down afterwards, your teammates have options from there. That'll be frustrating from JDC, or for JDC, I should say. Opening kill for Fnatic provided by Fosher atop Banana. And this is Crims making sure to eliminate that safe position from JDC. And a big win for Fnatic. You can see what it means to him. Just pistols for Maus, not even armor. Asher already again with Nico Daz this time toward B. They're going to check sandbags clean. Try and get the call toward the inside of the site. And Maus is shifting away from the B bomb site, shifting away from Banana. Torji and Exertion were there in conjunction with Frozen, and two of them disappeared, rotated all the way back to A. Thankfully, Fnatic is stopped for the moment by a defensive smoke, but I mean, they can just stick around and re-execute when that eventually fades, and there's no chance that Frozen can stop this. As he sets for smoke toward Coffins, in a close enough position, he can swing out and then immediately Molotov off toward the new box as well, should he like to do so. Frozen just going for the lucky play. Ooh, almost taking Fosha down. Hasn't been able to land any any kills, and that should be it. That will be it. I'm calling it. All right. Thank you, referee. 12-8. A four-round lead from Fnatic. Starting to look good. 18 kills on Mezzi. 18 kills on Fosha. Both teams looking to steal their opponent's map picks in this series. That would take us to the final map, deciding map of Vertigo. No, no, ancient. ancient. We started right. on where to go. Dang it. You're going backwards, Jason. I know. In so many ways. In so many ways. It was a good try, though. At least that map was in the series, you know? <laughs> Could have been worse. It's true, but on the other hand, uh, we did just cast it for like an hour. Yep, that's true. My brain just uh, completely memory hold that one. Sir, we'll close out once the gun. Oh, he actually reached it. That was not bad. All right, gets one free AK. We take that. They're going to need to take it because they're four rounds down right now. Asha with the shot onto Dexter convincingly. So Fnatic looking solid. All right, well, here we go. This is one of the... There, there's uh, Maus is running out of opportunities to get back into this game, running out of chances to pick up the pace and get this defense short up. Up in the hands of Torji. I believe the first time in the second half we've seen it. He's going to be in Banana. Crimson Roy going to disrespect this mid smoke entirely. They walk through quietly. Dexter, a challenge. I don't think he's seen a barrel yet. Oh, what a shot from Crims ducking underneath it. But JDC has a response. I don't think he's aware of Roy. I don't think he's aware of the follow up. Smoke. But Roy's not picking up the pace. No, but smoke goes, exactly. Smoke goes down. That'll give away the game a little bit. It's the advantage, though, still, because they caught out Dexter. So now is are in trouble once more. And Roy is going to slowly lurk in that direction. CT's going to back off inside the site. JDC all on his own. Completely alone again. Above Flames, he'll find one, but they're already there. They've already wrapped in. And Nikodas rotating back over. Bomb is going to be planted. Another save, 13 to 8. That's a cool, clever play for JDC to get that first kill over the Flames. He knows he's got smoke to protect him from the lane play. But, I mean, in that position on top of the boxes, it's an easy spam for Mezzi to trade it off. 13 to 8, and there's no chance for Frozen and Exertion. This is the right call. Save the weapons, save the op, save the M4. Three round losing bonus for Mal's means they will get 2,900, means they can have another M4 on the board in the next round. But it's getting very, very desperate for Mal's. Yeah, it is. And not looking nearly what I would have expected. And remember, they've won both pistols in this game. Yeah, that's a good point. 
both pistols and you're still kind of getting trounced. We'll see if they can recover. Comeback needed for Maus. They're down five. Timeout taken. Coach wants to get involved in the action. Third timeout for Maus. I want to speak above all else during the timeout. B stream games held in the same building, obviously, as the A stream. And therefore, for their sake, it's not like the crowd or we as casters are on house audio, although in this case, while we're in Brazil, it's Portuguese. But there's no advantage being given away. The noise canceling probably for the peace and quiet during the games because there's so much noise related to the other stream yeah. and other match. Man, I can't believe Maus hasn't been able to stop anything. They won the pistol on the second round, but they haven't been able to stop fast mid plays. They haven't been able to stop banana plays. They're going to get another chance here. Frozen and Exertion are going to have action at them. Fnatic have just called this out of spawn. All five players just walking into contact. Nice double kill from Exertion. Good read on that. He knew the damage was there. Got called from his teammate. He's going to throw it a nade and do a bit more himself as well as he gets back to new box. But they need to get closer on this. CT spawn, no smoke down yet. That's why Torzi's just willing to sit where he is and not get closer to try and boost up a teammate to try and potentially have put, in this case, it would have been Dexter Where, Where's up all the above. utility? I, I don't know. There's they, a massive missing smoke. Yeah, well, I mean, they just walked up and out of this from right out of the get-go of this round. Where do they spend all their nades? Did they check them up mid? Oh, I didn't catch that, but having no smoke for CT spawn this early in the round when you're attacking this B-bomb set is crazy. Yeah. Mezzi's going to alleviate some of the pressure with a nice headshot. There's a smoke picked up. Mezzi's going to chuck it down. Dexter's rotating over, but all he's got is support utility. I think maybe the, the, the utility was on the bodies. Because, yeah, you're right. As soon as the opera gave himself up, they give themselves the sight. And, and then they smoke it off. They walk in. It's Dexter that has to do something of this. But he's caught off by Mezzi. And another round, surely, to Fnatic. It should be a 14th. JDC tagged down to 15 already on Alphamos. So low on the other side, though. 19 and 14. Double peak potential. Could just dry peak this as well. Look at the crossfire they have established. New box and back of the site, and don't be misled by the communication. That's Roy we see on screen, not JDC, but he is ever focused to make sure there won't be anyone peeking against this, and JDC will walk away. Yeah, that's all you really can do in this situation with low HP. You don't know what the call is. You don't know how much HP these guys have. You might be hearing it's low, but you don't, you don't know that it's this low, and with no kit as well. Oh, man, if he had more HP, he might have been a little bit more challenging right after the bomb got planted to try and take out the planter as he tried to escape, trigger the trap of the follow-up peek, but... It's not enough HP to really do a whole lot with. Mezzi and Roy both go down with the bomb blasts. Six round lead from Fnatic, two rounds away from taking us to Ancient, a third and deciding map to get our first team into the legend stage at IEM Rio. And that is what's on the line. Meanwhile, on this stage, it's a little bit more problematic it's an elimination match and there is a home team 00 nation currently playing against ihc on the a stream you can check that one out for yourself i think they're between maps right now well, that's all i'll say is fasher takes out exertion he's gonna double up and find frozen finally a start for mouse they got super aggressive on banana but it's immediately countered yeah finally something a little bit positive going their way to start the round but still i mean fanatic's just been outplaying them this entire map Five in a row, four of them bomb plants and explosions on this T side for Fnatic. And Crim's ever patient, has two potential victims towards his position. Dexter and JDC making their move. They'll have heard that drop down from Crim's. And they want to punish him on the fallback. Torji's playing retake, though. He's playing for some kind of a set piece, drop a Molotov. With that 5-7, allow them back into the bomb site. Flashbang to get information. Here comes the counter utility. Here comes the utility from the T side. Here comes the counter Molotov. It's out, but Fasher's through it. Oh, he's standing on it. He's taking his time about getting across. Torzi in behind him. 5-7, oh, we get saved. Crims, massive kill. 
Gives his team that one extra man as they try and get the bomb down. Dexter's a little bit closer than they might have expected, though. Smoke's going to dissipate, and he is near the coffins. He'll see the shin, reads it well, knows he's going to be counterpeaked, does the damage onto Crims, but couldn't get the kill, but gives JDC a fighting chance. And it is going to be one heck of a fight. He's going to go back over to Ruins as well. Bomb will be planted at default in the time it takes him to do so. And they're going to cross each other off. Oh, they're both looking away. They're both looking away. He's missed the shot on Roy, and he's lost the opportunity on Crims, but he heard him running. He might even just stick this. He might try. He doesn't have a kit. He doesn't have a kid. He's going to be so careful to get off this when Crims comes back in. He's got tons of time. No mistake. JDC keeps it alive. It'll go 14-9. Yeah, nice clutch. This time it's a rinse and repeat of the previous round, right? The 1v2 where JDC just didn't have the HP to actually go for it. This time he's got plenty of health. And he kind of has to challenge at 8-14. to 14. That's a nice win. That's a nice, tough win for Malus. But can they build upon it? Still not a whole lot of money. Frozen's at 6k. He can drop an AWP over to Torji. And try get one going. They're going to have to do something creative to get back into this because they're still not out of the woods just yet. They do keep them off of overtime point. Dexter likes that very much. Crims, a little bit less so. So they fight for another map in this series. There's still a chance at this. Very easily, Mouse could go on a run here. They just need to figure it out. They just need that, that kind of an opening start with a double kill down banana. You're not going to get that every single time, but uh, just winning some of those early fights on a consistent basis. That's what Miles is looking for at the moment. Op is going to be dropped over to Torji. Dexter on the UMP. Rifles are rounded for Miles. Round 24. And Fnatic have another buy after this. And maybe another one after that with a losing bonus built up. They're in a great position just two rounds away. with the angle at the arch. Doesn't want to get aggressive toward middle. Doesn't want to give anything away early on in this round. Molotov as well toward Nico Das. He's forced to fly a smoke defensively. So that's one less they could potentially have when they do get closer to his site. Still four in play. Nico Das gets out exertion just through the smoke and they're going to push faster. Doesn't even matter. He was running and gunning. He wanted frozen down. They've got a two-man advantage and Dexter stuck. He's outside in... Banana, this one's done, call it. Oh, wow. Nikodaz, what a great round. He was phenomenal on Vertigo as well in the previous map. Yeah, Torji, get the hell away. You need that AWP. You need that AWP if you want to still try and recover this. Oh, Nikodaz even jumping toward the fountain to try and get vision towards CT. I don't think Nikodaz spotted the first player that he killed that was kind of behind a smoke, but he, he spotted the first player along the wall pushing towards Log, so I think he just kind of assumed there was going to be a second player pushing with him. JDC, easy kill onto Roy, but Crims mm. is elusive. Yep, he's got him down, so that's one less gun. Towards his op, they're going to chase it as he gets tagged. He knows it, and he's desperate to click, kill him off, so he goes toward the pistol instead. Further pursuit, though, as they try and close the map down on top of him, and with this much time left in the bomb, they'll get to him, yeah. surely. Thirsty for that op. Gets inside a library, but Crims again, the one that wants to be elusive. Even crouch walking, gone. 15 rounds for Fnatic. Get ready for Ancient. This one's looking unlikely with very, very little economy to play with on the yeah. mouse side. Limited weaponry for Miles in this final, in this potentially final round. Round 25. Exertion, the only one with any real cash. 4,400. Everyone else, you're going to have to drop down to Famas. So, I mean, there, there's there's the chance they can turn this around. Torji's going to go for the scout. But Fnatic have six chances to take us to Ancient and give themselves an opportunity to qualify for the legend stage in the third and deciding map. Shot out from Roy. Zershin gets the bitter end of that deal. Frozen with an aid that'll take some damage into Nico Daz. Oh my goodness, JDC. He thinks he's gonna be clever this time and he even checks it, but Krims is ready for it. Krims is looking pretty good right now. Let's see, up to 19 kills. All right, not yeah. too bad. Quiet 19. Smoke down, Dexter tries to pop a shot from the deke. But I think this one's dwindling. Just by a thread at this point. And uh, I mean, Fnatic have just made the perfect call in the mid rounds. They're gonna go out holes. Uh, I mean, Torji was so far away, he's had to hustle to get into position, but he's only got a scout. Like, what are you gonna do there? There's, no st there's not enough stopping power on that to stop a holes pop. And that's it. Fnatic have done it. They've won the second map. They've won Inferno. They've completed this really dominant run here, capitalizing on mistakes in the first half and having a very clean T side. Oh, they want the knife. They want the knife to get him back. Look, Crimson's going to say, oh, yeah, you knifed us to start it off. 
I'm gonna knife you to finish. His teammates are even backing he's, away. He's so far away though. His teammates, yeah, they had to have it, <laughs> have it happen. They could have got closer to the wall and knifed him when he came around if they knew his HP. It would have been, been a great been. return considering the game started with a double knife out of Torji in the pistol round. That was absolutely wild. But from there, it was all downhill for Mouse. Not a whole lot to talk about for them. Good win from Fnatic recovering after a vertigo loss. We're off to a break. We're gonna let the desk talk this one over and we'll see you on Ancient to figure out which one of these two teams is qualifying for the IM Rio Legend stage.